The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles. Uh, they're relatively small muscles. Uh, they form a cuff of tissue, especially the two rotator cuff muscles on top. They actually pull the ball portion of the shoulder to the cup portion of the shoulder. And a lot of people have described the shoulder as a golf ball sitting on a tee. The rotator cuff muscles and tendons are very important in that they compress the humeral head to the cup portion of the glenoid and it allows the big power muscles to be more efficient. So when you have a tear of the rotator cuff, one, it tends to cause weakness and pain and uh, patients tend to pinch part of their humeral head against a bone that sits on top called the acromion bone. And all of that can lead to pain, weakness, and other symptoms. There's several different ways to injure the rotator cuff. There's two common ways to do it. Oftentimes these can be wear and tear type injuries. Uh, patients that are involved in sports, especially overhead throwing sports. Sometimes uh, workers who are involved, uh, or their job involves them doing a lot of repetitive lifting or reaching. They start to get some small micro tears, maybe some inflammation in the tissue. It doesn't heal and it slowly gets worse over time. Obviously, patients can also have traumatic injuries to the rotator cuff, something where they're, they slip and fall or lift something they shouldn't that's too heavy, and that could lead to tearing of the rotator cuff as well. Non-operative treatments for rotator cuff tears involve things like cortisone injections, anti-inflammatory medication, physical therapy, activity modification. Oftentimes, those can be very helpful and successful. Unfortunately, when patients have a full thickness tear of their rotator cuff, it typically slowly gets worse over time. So most patients at that point choose to have surgery. Surgery is relatively straightforward. It's an arthroscopic procedure typically done just through small poke holes in your shoulder. I simply take the torn tendon and I reattach it very firmly to the bone. Uh, I look all around inside the patient's shoulder, so if there's any additional damage, I treat that at that time. Patients come in, have surgery, they go home the same day. Uh, one of the hardest part of that surgery is uh, you're in a sling after surgery for up to four to six weeks. Your shoulder gets stiff, your muscle gets weak, you have to work hard with, typically with a physical therapist to get your motion and get your strength back. It can be a long recovery process after that surgery. Well, step one after surgery is we have to get the torn tendon to heal. And typically that involves a, a period of rest or immobilization. That's where patients typically are wearing a sling for four to six weeks. I will have patients start some simple range of motion exercises on their own. Typically within a couple weeks, they're starting to work with a physical therapist. It's gonna help get their motion back, help get their strength back. Uh, it's not uncommon for patients after surgery to take as long as three months to start feeling good about their shoulder and sometimes up to six months or longer until they feel like they're fully recovered. 